Hi everyone, on this video from Count Backwards from 10, we're going to take a look at part two of our EKG lecture of three in order to briefly discuss the distribution of the EKG, meaning which leads correspond to which anatomical parts of the heart, as well as the blood supply to those parts of the heart. Again, part three, we're gonna talk about how to read, the basics of reading an EKG, and also what it means to you in the operating room and how to respond to it appropriately. So as you can see here, we've redrawn our x and y axis from part one with our EKG lead vectors drawn on for our axial as well as our precordial leads on the bottom and a few extra labels, right in brown, left brown, then we have posterior and anterior which are for the uh, precordial lead drawing as well as the dotted lines represent the sternum like we had in part one. So first we're going to talk about which leads correspond to which part of the heart and why at a base emergent level it may be important perioperatively. Honestly, I wish in school someone had showed me this because I struggled to repeatedly memorize it and I know some people out there did the same and might still be. So first, if I told you that a patient was having an inferior wall MI, because that's going to be the one we look at first, our inferior wall, which leads would we look at to confirm a diagnosis? Many of you, some don't, may or may not know, but we're going to look at leads 2, 3, and AVF. And I know some of you out there memorize that. I know I did originally. But, and this will follow through all for all the vector leads, the vectors point to the part of the heart that they're describing or the part that they represent. And so, as you can see on our first X and Y axis, leads 2, 3, and AVF that I'm circling down here in purple all point inferiorly. Therefore, inferior wall MIs will manifest themselves in a normal heart and a normal EKG in leads 2, 3, and AVF. I'm just going to extend this line here a little bit. Next, we're going to look at the left lateral wall. And again, I'm going to pose the same question. If you're having a left lateral wall MI, which leads would we look at in order to confirm it? And we're going to use the exact same logic. And all of the leads that point to the left would be the leads that describe a lateral wall MI. So lead AVL and 1, both point left. So AVL, 1. And then if we look down at our precordial leads, leads V5 and V6 also point to the left. So leads AVL, lead 1, lead V5, and lead V6 all describe the lateral wall of the heart. Next, the septal wall, or the septum. Now, a lot of people off the bat think V3 and V4, but it's actually, and we'll use orange for this, V1 and V2. I'm going to circle them down here for you guys. So the way that I remember this is by looking at the chest itself. I see the sternum, which I've drawn here in a dotted line, as being the septum, quote unquote, of the chest, because it separates the left and the right chest. And because leads V1 and V2 sit on opposite sides of the sternum, or opposite sides of the septum of the chest, V1 on the right and V2 on the left, that's how I remember that V1 and V2 represent the septal wall. Again, just kind of the way that I remember it. Next up, anterior wall. And we're going to go ahead and circle this in yellow. V3 and V4 are anterior wall. And as you can think about, V3 and V4 point directly anteriorly. Last but not least, we have AVR that's up here. And like we said earlier, no, kind of, uh, AVR represents the right upper portion of the heart. Again, a normal EKG and a normal heart. And it also describes the right ventricular outflow tract. Wonderful. So I'll give you all a second to kind of write all this down before I erase it. Um, and then we're going to take a look at the blood supply to each of these areas. So let's get rid of all this. Get rid of all this. Very good. Now I promise to make the blood supply just as simple as the EKG leads and what they describe. I'm just going to go ahead and write back down. We have our septal wall. We have our left lateral wall. We have our inferior 
wall and the interior wall. And right, check it out, retract, and my upper quad. Good. I'm just going to do a little of this. And now, kind of just like before, we're going to draw a heart. My rendition of the heart, where same thing, this is the right atria, left ventricle. Good. And now we're going to draw a little kind of doodle here, and that's pretend our aorta. And this here is our left main coronary artery. And over, oh, I apologize. This is our right main coronary artery. Apologies, apologies. Right coronary artery. With this being our left coronary artery. Now, the left coronary artery gives rise here to the LAD. It's the first branch. This is our LAD. And then it continues on and gives off the other, we're going to call it a branch, even though it really just feels like a continuation of the left circumflex. Circum means around and flexere is to bend, so this artery bends around the left side of the heart. And the right coronary is going to come this way. And same kind of thing. It's just going to go ahead and bend over here behind the heart. And at which point it will also give rise to the posterior descending artery. So now what of these corresponds to what? Well, I told you it would be just as easy. The left anterior descending, our LAD, runs right over the septum of the heart and therefore it supplies the septal wall. The left circumflex, you guessed it, left circumflex goes around the left side, so it's going to supply our left lateral wall. Inferior wall, anterior wall, right ventricular outflow tract and right upper quadrant, guess what? All of these are the right coronary artery. So for completeness, if anyone wants to write it down, we'll just put V1, V2, V ABL, 1, V5, V6, and then everything else is the RCA. So our inferior wall is 2, 3, ABF. The anterior wall is V3 and V4. And our RVOT and right upper quadrant is ABF. And this is the major blood supply of the heart, and this is kind of what, what we're looking at. So again, depending on where your blockages are, you get an idea of where you're going to get EKG changes. And this matters, especially in the OR, because a patient who starts developing ST changes, or major T wave changes, say in the right coronary artery distribution in any of these three isn't necessarily treated the same as a patient who has something in the septum or the left lateral as treatments with say preload reducers can lead to disastrous outcomes in these patients now the last thing you may see come up and again it was a question that i've had for a long time and i finally managed to get answers to some of them is kind of the smaller other vessels so Dominance is something that you're going to hear, and what dominance refers to is which vessel gives rise to the posterior rise to the posterior descending artery, and in 90% of cases, it's going to be the right coronary artery. The right coronary artery also gives rise to the AV nodal artery. This is something that you're also going to see on your tests and boards. Lastly, you'll have your acute marginal artery and your obtuse marginal artery. And these are branches, acute of the right coronary artery, named because of the acute angle it forms with the heart and obtuse from the left circumflex, as it forms an obtuse angle on the heart. And then your diagonal arteries are arteries off of the LAD. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to write in and any topics that you'd like covered.